obviously, uh, I'm going to open the phones up on the whole Trayvon Martin situation. But I want to open the phones up first, in the first hour, for the type of people that are all over Infowars.com. It is a minority. It's a small number of people compared to the thousands of other comments. But there are hundreds of comments out of tens of thousands saying, I need to be killed. Not just Zimmerman uh, needs to be killed. And that the police all need to be killed. And that the jurors need to be killed, and the jurors need to commit suicide. And of course, you're seeing a lot of celebrities, black celebrities, say things like this. And it is such a disgusting spectacle that it makes me physically, physically nauseous. Physically uh, nauseous uh, to see things like this unfolding. And how it, it still shows the dinosaur media with the government can change the subject. Whether Zimmerman did it in cold blood or not, I think there was reasonable doubt, just like with OJ or so many other cases. And if there's reasonable doubt, you must acquit. You must find not guilty. And that's just how law works. And the way the media can try to inject all this racial tension, and you'll never hear anything out of the NAACP or the establishment black leadership that's run by the globalist about AFRICOM killing tens of thousands of innocent people a year, destroying Libya or uh, committing all these crimes or the Al-Qaeda forces they put in to control Libya, killing 40 plus thousand people, most of them blacks, uh, because some of the uh, Wahhabist Arabs are very, very racist. No, the only racism that can exist is white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant or Catholic or whatever. Just if you're a white guy, and you speak clear English, you're the devil. And it's just a diversion. I know it's fun to hate uh, for some people out there. It's fun for the ignorant Klan and groups. Um, but the Klan does not have MSNBC and Al Sharpton behind them. And it's meant to keep people in their own welfare controlled, dependency controlled, where basically all people in the inner city, from what I see in the culture that's put out, do is feel victimized and create a culture of separateness, which is done in the name of multiculturalism and liberalism. So you see how the eugenicist, fake liberal racist have deployed this. It's actually a stroke of genius. In fact, the Aryan nations, the white supremacist, uh, all those groups really should love the Democratic Party and should love uh, MSNBC because what it does is cause total division and balkanization where people then segregate themselves. And for that, I am called a racist. We're pointing out that 63% of uh, the abortions in Texas are minorities, similar numbers in Florida or New York, that is racist. Uh, for pointing out that uh, Obama, uh, that the black unemployment has doubled under Obama, that's on record, that is racist. So here, I won't be racist. Put Zimmerman in jail, put more fluoride in the black drinking water supply. Abort more black babies. Now we'll get an NAACP award. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. And we are going to have open phones and a ton of news throughout the broadcast for you today, and then we're going to have the head of Sheriff Joe Arpaio's cold case posse, Mike Zula, in studio with us to break down uh, his multi-year investigation of who Obama really is. And then there's no doubt we don't know who he is, and that birth certificate is a fake. There's no doubt. And you always hear these establishment folks out there saying, don't look at this, don't investigate it. Uh, you know, it's kooky, don't go there. We didn't buy two billion bullets. Uh, we're not spying on the press with the NSA. Uh, the border bill is secret. You can't see it, but it doesn't give amnesty. And then we get the bill and it has amnesty. Uh, Obama didn't run guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. And then the memos come out that indeed they did. 
on and on and on. Oh, the government isn't funding Al-Qaeda. Oh, the government is funding Al-Qaeda. All of this has come out. And I, I've actually got a clip I'm going to play later in the broadcast today from the five uh, Friday on Fox where they say, how dare these people support the fact saying that one of the uh, brothers, the surviving brother, the Patsy, uh, in the um, Boston bombing, how dare him plead not guilty, and how dare there be a group saying that he was set up. I mean, because we've been told, after they shot him up in the boat and tried to kill him, and then the press got a video feed of the boat, so they weren't able to uh, make sure he was dead, then he climbed out talking, and then suddenly had his throat cut out, and he looks like he's been tortured pretty bad. We know his brother was working for the CIA. That's come out. That's been confirmed. Back of the newspaper. Uh, and you've got a drill going on with a stand down and their friends being executed by the FBI and FBI agents involved uh, in investigating uh, and uh, their arrest uh, are falling out of helicopters. And now I, I was watching C-SPAN last uh, Friday and they were having hearings with the police chief of Boston, and they had some other Homeland Security people there, and they said, oh, no, we need robots everywhere looking for bombs and checkpoints and responses to IEDs, and it's the rollout of get ready for the domestic bombings. It's going to happen. This is how you bring in martial law if you're a foreign offshore crime syndicate that's hijacked the country. So I'm going to be getting into that after phone calls. In the middle of the next hour, I'm going to look at what's happened with the Boston bombing because... He's, he's, he's pled not guilty. He's pled not guilty. And that's because he's at least getting somewhat of a trial and hasn't been disappeared to Gitmo, which they tried to do. Where, oh, he, he says he did it. Uh, of course, we tortured people, but hey, I mean, you know, North Vietnam tortured our pilots and they confessed. And the good guys torture. No, the good guys don't torture. Torture is only good for fake confessions. That is a well-known historical fact. It's only good to terrorize the public. Are you saying our government has corrupt elements in it? I mean, what's wrong with torture? See how far we've gone? They've now announced that a few weeks ago, it only hit the news today, the law was repealed that we've had since the 40s, that you can't have domestic propaganda pointed at the people by the Pentagon and by the federal government using taxpayer money. And in the article uh, I saw that I'm going to get to, they're, they're saying things like, what's the big deal? I mean, we have other governments pointing propaganda at us, RT, Al Jazeera. What's wrong with having government propaganda pointed at you here in America? In fact, here's the article, U.S. repeals propaganda ban, spreads government-made news to Americans. Ladies and gentlemen, when you turn on, this is one of the biggest issues, when you turn on, the nightly news and the messages are anti-gun, anti-liberty, anti-freedom, anti-constitutional republic, anti-family, anti-second amendment, anti-common uh, decency. You know what the propaganda message is and it's come out for 70 years that Hollywood's been involved in propaganda. But now it is overtly anti-human, anti-freedom, and it's basically weaponized culture, weaponized media pointed at the American people. And it's a big whitewash article put out by Foreign Affairs, a division of the Washington Post. Kurt Nimmo cuts to the heart of it with his article up on Infowars.com. CIA will now openly propagandize Americans. Smith Mundit Act reformed this month allowing CIA to, dis, to disseminate propaganda. Yeah, it's not just the CIA. Remember Congress ruled in the Congressional uh, Accounting Office and they had several other investigations that it was illegal to use government money to try to get government uh, legislation passed because the legislation is supposed to come from the states and the representatives that are elected there, not from the central government using our tax money to try to affect the general public. That makes the government itself uh, the, the propagandist with the upper hand to, to, to shell the takeover of society. Every authoritarian country has a state-run media. And it's been done here really intensely the last 30, 40 years, intensifying. 
before it was outwardly focused with the Cold War, but that 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 propaganda comes back domestically. Now it's being focused in and directed against the American people and the American system and the Bill of Rights itself. It's openly being directed against the Constitution, against the Declaration of Independence, against any form of check and balance. It is it is so over the top in its extremism that it staggers and beggars the mind. There are no words to describe. And, and any time this stuff comes out, a micron of it will come out. In one year, the executive branch controlled by Bush, which is not supposed to be able to appropriate money and then direct it, Congress does that, and then orders the executive to implement through the bureaucracy. So you have a separation of powers. But in one year, $8 billion was spent by the federal government to promote no child left behind. $8 billion in one year that the executive had in its propaganda slush funds on one program to federalize education. That's what it really was. And to get kids into the government trap when they're three years old, not five years old. God forbid they get any influence from their parents. But parents aren't even parenting. It's television anyways. But they want to get their hands on them medically, get the vaccines in them, get the GMO in them, get them on the state-run path to identify with the state as mommy and daddy. And you remember uh, the commentators that came out, the different radio hosts, different TV hosts, different a journalist, different syndicated columnists that you never hear about anymore. Who was it? Armstrong Williams, who got $244,000. Let's pull that up, guys. Armstrong Williams uh, paid by White House, and it was secret. And then basically he was discredited, the media said, after it came out that he was given 244000 under the table just to write a couple news articles as a black conservative to sell conservatives on accepting what Bush was doing. And again, it wasn't even Bush. Yeah, there it is. Columnist dropped by syndicator over education department payments. And excuse me, I hadn't looked at that in about five years. It was $240,000, not $244,000. See, see, my memory distorts. When I was like younger than 30, it was photographic most of the time. Now, as you get older and brain cells die, I've noticed it's distorting. Like I said, okay, I believe that uh, the British East India Company was founded 400 years ago. And I was incorrect when they looked it up last week. It was 401 years ago. See the distortion? Uh, I'll say uh, Bloomberg and AP reported that Wells Fargo Wachovia laundered $376 billion in two years. And it was $378 billion. Why did I shave $2 billion? I, I don't know. I don't know. He was paid, why did I just add 4000 He was paid $240,000 secretly by fake neocon conservatism. And then they used that coming out as a reign of terror to make all the other writers and journalists get scared. So that they would then go and sign national security agreements to actually be spies for the Pentagon, CIA, FBI, uh, other departments of Homeland Security. Oh, yeah, you didn't know that. Under Project Mockingbird, and that's just an old system, most of the major editors, most of the major writers are actually doubling under InfraGuard type programs as assets of different federal agencies, themselves run by foreign offshore banks. We ain't in Kansas anymore. And I only use the Armstrong Williams case, just like I'll use giving smallpox blankets to Indians to talk about biowarfare. It's something most people know about. There are thousands of admitted examples. When, I mean, when you go see a movie and there's an anti-male uh, thing presented or an anti-family thing, or, or the male's always an idiot and the mom's always the boss. That is to model, humans model, just like dogs model off the behavior they see. So that so they model so that you go around and women, when you go into a, a trendy area, they don't talk to men, waitresses, uh, waiters, cops, bureaucrats, they talk to the woman. Men aren't even to be talked to 
or listened to as slaves, you've heard this before, the house slaves or the women, unless you work for the government, then you're a hyper male in a uniform to be worshiped as the God. But only the only male role model is of the state. The state is the husband. I tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. All right, I'm going to go to your phone calls in the next segment. We're going to get uh, New York TV uh, newsman Lionel on, who was a former uh, Miami prosecutor. So he's going to be popping in to give us his take on how this, th this was a fraudulent trial. At the bottom of the next hour, uh, then we've got a special guest uh, joining us as well to break down uh, who Obama really is coming up in the third hour. But the reason I, I started the broadcast off today with the announcement of, oh, the CIA and the Pentagon and every other federal agency is going to directly propagandize you. Because this isn't just news. If you read what they're saying, they're going to engage in psyops openly. Well, in a way, that's almost good that we're going to have open state-run media because I'm trying to explain to you that in the old days, the FBI would come to somebody and say, if you don't report like we want, uh, we're basically going to come after you. And again, most of the FBI wasn't involved in this. They had special divisions that did the political intimidation. So the compartmentalized good guy FBI had no idea what was going on. They had Defense Department people that did this. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover would get on a power trip and make directors uh, give him uh, edits of films early so he could approve it. This always happens in authoritarian regimes. If you watch the lives of others, that's based on a true story of the Stasi spy grid in East Germany. Uh, you see the party officials over arts entertainment making all the most lovely uh, TV and film stars and actresses have sex with them and approving what they liked. And if someone didn't kiss their butt, even if they were a communist, that's finally what made the Eastern Germany fall was that they were even mean to other leftists and communists. It was just authoritarian nightmare. Of course, anything centralized will become authoritarian. It's like creating 100 degree swamp water. You're going to get amoebas in it. You understand that? That's kind of an analogy. Liberty is like sub-zero water. There's not going to be any tyranny living in that. But tyranny is that it heats up to 103 degrees. It is a living soup of parasitic crud. And you let big government come in, you have just brought in the ether in which this is allowed to grow. Conversely, history has shown, and I'm a hardcore libertarian, no government creates an ether of just gangs and bedlam and then warlords that then form governments. And generally, people get sick of the warlords and no productivity, then they get overthrown by more and more stable systems. That's the problem with people like uh, Adam Kokesh's plans. Is he's like, we'll just we'll just see what happens. We'll just get rid of the government and then we'll figure it out. And I'm like, really? With the big mega corporations having all the power and their own paramilitary forces, they will instantly come into that vacuum. The globalists actually overthrow countries' governments to create a vacuum to come in and do that. I mean, we're talking real world here, ladies and gentlemen, not pipe dreams. You have anarchy, you get hell on earth. You get a big government, you have hell on earth. This is a fact. This has happened over and over again. And the biggest piece of evidence you've got of tyranny 
is not just the books written by the globalists and the Council on Foreign Relations and the Club of Rome that we bibliograph in films and shows and show you where they're at and please go look it up. Please go read the British Ministry of Defense 2007 uh, global collapse model. Please go find out why they're getting ready, why they want our guns. Please. When you turn on the news or you turn on uh, dramas and sitcoms and movies, every show is anti-male, anti-gun, anti-liberty, pro-abortion, pro-forced vaccines, pro-checkpoints, pro-martial law. I saw two movies a few weeks ago, uh, action drama movies is what we happen to watch in bed late at night with my wife. And both of them, the CIA was killing people's kids in front of them. And at the end of the movie, they're good guys for killing people's kids. In fact, I'm going to look up the name of that during the break. It's like numbers something. One of the movies where the numbers and, and they broadcast out the numbers and then the hit teams go out, but bad guys take over and then broadcast kill the CIA guys and the hit teams and on and on and on. And in the movie, you know, he kills the guy's 11-year-old daughter and he kind of feels bad about it, but it's okay because he's a good guy. Cold-blooded, kills the girl because he knows it's, I mean, it's just sick. And that's what they do in real life. It's collateral damage, folks. In this country, at least since the 60s, they will send in paramilitary teams, whether it's in Guatemala or, or South Vietnam or right here in the U.S. And if they're at your somebody's house, say, killing Gary Webb, if his kids would have been accidentally there, they'd have killed them, folks. That's called collateral damage, you know, where they blow up a wedding party to, and kill 100-plus innocent people to get one bad guy that they call a terrorist. I saw Time magazine had an article on drones, and it said, it's killed so many thousands of terrorists. No judge, no jury. You're just a terrorist, and if we kill you, you're a terrorist. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is, is an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states and the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. 
but the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our Info Warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the New World Order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live uh, here on this Monday uh, worldwide uh, edition of the transmission. Mike Zulo will be joining us, head of the cold case uh, posse. He says 100% proof that the birth certificate is completely fake. And again, uh, they put out a fake one on purpose, I believe, to then create a debate about that instead of all of Obama's policies. It shows how sophisticated these guys are. The whole Kenya thing, this is conclusive now, was a diversion from who his dad really was. They, the, the White House admits, he writes in his own book, Dreams of My Father, about how he would go and spend summers with the famous communist pornographer, black pornographer, his dad. Unbelievable. But they don't call it his dad. He would go to be mentored, and his grandfather was good friends with him and would bring him over there. And you look, it's his dad. It's amazing. No wonder his wife, the first lady, said over and over again until six years ago that Obama was born in Kenya. No wonder his Harvard documents said that he was born in Kenya when he was the head of the Harvard Law Review. I mean, that's their write-up in the magazine that came out quarterly. Imagine, you're the head of the Harvard Review and there's the write-up about you and they had a write-up that went out uh, to publishers for over 15 years. Hey, uh, you know, do a book about Obama, this great guy, and they did books. The, you know, the Kenyan-born guy that came to America and became the head of the Harvard Review. And then Chris Matthews goes, it's insane to say that we haven't given the birth certificate for four years, remember? They go, this is the birth certificate, a receipt of it. A modern printout. Everybody's like, that's the printout. And then finally they go, oh, you're right, here it is. And, and you look at it and it's in layers on purpose with the different layers of fake stuff. And they used a font that's the typewriter font to make it look like a typewriter, but it's not a typewriter because the letters are identical. They have fake splats on them, microscopic splats, but they're all unified. It's open and shut completely fake. It'd be like if every snowflake falling out of the sky was the same snowflake. Those aren't natural snowflakes. It'd be like if you went in a house that had thousands of fingerprints, but they were all the same fingerprint, you'd say, this, you know, this is not more people's fingerprints, this is one set. This is the type of stuff, but he's got dozens and dozens and dozens. In fact, I told Zulo uh, last week, or through the producer, to bring his exhibits if you wanted to, to email those to you guys? Did, did he indeed send the exhibits? Because I'd like to go over the exhibits uh, on air. The affidavit, good. Well, we'll go over any exhibits that they also have online uh, for TV viewers, for radio listeners. Uh, we'll direct you uh, where the uh, affidavit is. 
because uh, they're going ahead with a lawsuit over this. So he's going to be in studio uh, with us uh, on that subject. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.